host of Sanzo, and joining me today is Silvercrow. I ship it, I ship it all. Ship this, ship that, ship that, that pony, that dragon, that griffin. Yay! Yay, a lot of shipping. <laughs> and talking about shipping, you also have Totera. I am so sorry, guys. I don't know what I'm apologizing for, but I am so sorry. Why? I don't know. Why do people keep asking me that? <laughs> it's okay. But anywho, uh, if you're hearing us in a rush, well, we're kind of because most of us are tight on time. Yes. Let's just say that this is a really derpy episode, but this is an MBS show, so things are derpy. So anyway, today on this week's episode review, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 19, Dragon Drop. In this episode, Rarity worries she's doing she's done something to upset Spike when he stopped making time for her. Ooh, what did you do, Rarity? What did you do? So, before we start off, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you have to say? Well, Rarity is the one who sold this episode as uh, she just shows her extreme reactions to everything. And I mean everything. So she's a lot of fun to watch. Yet, despite my uh, intro, I don't think you have to view this as a shipping episode. This is just Spike has a new friend and reprioritizes time. And maybe, just maybe, has matured enough to let to leave his crush behind. But the end of a crush does not mean the end, of the, the start of another ship. Which is fun. And it's always wonderful to see the return to Gabby. She is my favorite griffin. Sorry, Gallus. <laughs> oh, good. That's going to be sad. And what about you, Tara? I really enjoyed it too. I like how Rarity was in this episode. I also enjoyed the lesson. And I I just loved how Tabitha did the acting through this. Tabitha did a good job with this one. It was really insane. So anywho, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. Tabitha did a great job. The return of Gabby is a lot of fun. And it's nice to see... Rarity chasing after Spike for once. <laughs> so, yay. Go, go Spike. Woohoo. So, anyway, if you have not watched the episode yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. And, well, let's start off the show or review. We start off the review with Rarity sneaking into Spike's bedroom. Hmm. That's not good. But Spike is awake. <laughs> But Spike is awake, and he's writing fanfiction? Hmm. But anywho, Rarity talks to Spike about, Hey, uh, Spike, I want uh, to go to the gem caves, and can you follow me carrying bags and whatnot? And Spike is not really paying attention to her until she snaps him out of it. And it seems that Spike was distracted by writing a letter to a buddy. It seems that Spike is not interested in hanging out with Rarity because he has a date? Hmm. Interesting. So, let's pause here for a bit. And, Silver, what do you think? Well, first off, I'm not sure Rarity has snuck into his room. She's actually... I think she just arrived. But it's it. he's writing in the dark, which means... Spike may be going through his gothic phase. There's no other way to put it. Not really, because when you take a look, see at the what you would call this scene, he's writing in front of the window where sunlight is pouring through, so he has sufficient light. But he's in a darkened room, and the light is only to facilitate him pouring his soul onto the paper and expressing his deep, dark secrets. While listening to my oh, couple romance? I would have also accepted something by Lincoln Park. Too soon? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. Uh, well, what about you, Tara? Okay, first off, where's the security? I mean, if Rare could just go right in, shouldn't she plan a visit or something? I mean, I know she's their friend, but, I mean, they could plan a schedule. But I also, because I guess Rarity is so used to, I wouldn't say manipulate, but asking Spike to go out with her and that she even says like, oh, you know, I'll need a strong bodyguard to protect me in the gem cave and I also need this and that. And then she makes that face while Spike's too busy writing a note. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the faces in this one are just too awesome. Well, anywho, after the intro, Rarity goes to the caves with another friend. She picks the gems and other friend is not really good at what you would call this picking up the gems and said friend is Applejack 
And Applejack is not happy with the way that Rarity is treating her. Uh, she screams and the bats don't like it. Yeah, let's just say that um, Applejack is no gem farmer. Mm-hmm. So Rarity goes back to the castle and pours her feeling to Twilight. And telling Twilight, oh no, what could have I done? Stuff like, oh, woe is me. Uh, Spike is not paying attention to me. Oh, have I been replaced and blah, 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 blah. So Twilight just says, maybe you've done something wrong, but you don't know. Maybe you should go apologize. Yes, yes, yes. So Rarity do so. And Spike is left with cleaning or moving the couch away. Oh no. So we go to the post office where we see Derby handing some letters to Gabby and Rarity pushing a big crate. You could say that it is a loot crate. Mm. <laughs> oh, it just works. <laughs> yes. So anywho, Rarity and Gabby banter for a bit. And yes, uh, long story short, Rarity just explains her plan to Gabby about apologizing to Spike, but she got no idea what she's apologizing for. And I'm going to pause here. So Tara, what do you think? Well, I kind of do like how Rarity is so used to Spike being around. And yet when Applejack's there helping her out, you don't see her at first. You think, oh, who's helping her now? And then you see Applejack with the lantern on her head. And it's like, oh my... Because usually Rarity and Applejack, they don't get along too well because they both have different... uh, I wouldn't say cultures, but different tastes, because she likes fashion, Applejack likes working hard. But then after we cut to where she she has to talk about Twilight, and then it's nice that Twilight's being basically, you know, what she is, the princess of friendship, and helping her out, talking about what's her problem. Basically being, you know, like, uh, um, uh, I just had a brain fart, what do you call those doctors that are there to listen to you? Psychiatrist? (laughs) Yes, a psychiatrist. Or that too. And because she bought, she bought the couch in, and she's there listening to her problems. The fainting couch has not been the same ever since season two, was it? I think it was what, season two. The, when she was like, the worst possible thing! Yes. But I, I do have to point something out. Uh, Twilight says she got into an argument with friends. And I'm thinking, who? Do you guys have any idea who? Mm. What, Twilight? Twilight get into an argument with friends? Yeah, that's what she said. Well, she did get into well, an argument with Pinky on the movie. Yeah, true. Yeah. I was, th- I was thinking the same thing, and then there was the anger she had at the others during uh, Lesson Zero. Uh, true that. But okay, that's some good reference. Anyway, um, Tara Silva, what about you? Well, let's see. One, I always find it funny that Twilight is instantly assuming, oh, you've done something wrong, mm-hmm. or you've offended someone. This is. Despite the fact that she's becoming more ready to rule Equestria, Twilight still has maybe a bit of a, a panic streak in her. She's not counts. She didn't say, uh, "Why not just ask Spike what's up?" She said, "Maybe you should go apologize." <laughs> I like uh, Twilight. That may not be the best. Oh yeah, true, true. Uh, that may not be the best advice. So we'll work on that. True. 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 Now, I, I do love the contrast with Applejack and Rarity. While they may have different tastes, they are the most fun to uh, pair off, and therefore I do ship it. <laughs> Final episode be darned. <laughs> All right, you know. But talk about minimalist that Applejack is so attached to her hat that she strings a lantern <laughs> to, said Stetson, rather than opt for a hard hat, which is far more practical. But thankfully, Applejack is hard-headed enough that I don't fear for her safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, Tabitha going all out. The rarity apology expressions. I can't tell if it's throwing her hooves in the air like she just doesn't care. Or the weird, <laughs> weird lip curl. Oh yeah, that, that one. <laughs> That's a bit terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> do, do, that is a one-second frame where where it is not meant to be snapshot or screenshot. <laughs> Just like real life, we all make faces while we're talking that we'd rather not become uh, immortal. <laughs> true, that, true, that. But anywho, I'm going to carry on. So, Spike walks in and Rarity apologizes to Spike. And Spike says, 
uh, you're forgiven. And why are you asking for an apology? And Spike explains that I'm here with Gabby, uh, my pen pal. Uh, we've been, as you might call this, sending letters back and forward. And somehow we got them close. Really, really close. Like, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> so anyway, bye bye, Rarity. And Rarity is not feeling it. Like, she is sad. So we have a montage where she remembers all of the memories that she had with Spike. And now that she's doing things alone, she's not really feeling it. So, during all this time, she's been asking friends for advice, like asking Rainbow Dash to help her carry some of her fabrics and whatnot, and Fluttershy being the pincushion and stuff. So, I think Fluttershy mentioned something. Why don't you remind him how good friends you are? Something like that. I'm not 100% sure. And I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? I think Fluttershy is giving better advice than the Princess of Friendship. That's a bit of a shocker. <laughs> it's like, the thing is, Rarity has just gotten, I think Rarity has gotten used to sort of the blind adoration. I don't think she ever felt a reciprocation of Spike's affection, but she enjoyed the attention that came with it. Now she's get now that that's denied, she's having to really confront her own selfishness. And... That's going to make it hard for her to be a likable character this episode because we've had eight whole seasons of watching her somewhat take this relationship for granted. Now it almost feels karmic to see her struggling like this. But she's going to do some things that I think seem very selfish at first, but actually, I think, uh, speak in her favor. Now, Spike and Gabby getting along, as both of them have felt very excluded or not cut from the same cloth as their larger culture. Gabby was the only nice griffin who was enamored by ponies, while, you know, most griffins took Gilda's approach. And Spike and the dragons, do I even need to go into detail? Oh, yeah, I think we talk a lot about it in previous episodes, so yeah. So I, I like that the two who feel outcast sort of bond Simply saying you become friends with someone when you with those words, wait, you too? Cool, 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 cool. Kind of reminds me of Timon and Pumbaa from The Lion King. <laughs> <coughs> so, Tara, what about you? What do you think? Well, I kind of agree with what So said. At first, I kind of don't like how rare it is because she is, she's like one of those people where uh, you hang out with this person a lot and yet they don't thank you or take you for granted. Like, I'm not saying Rarity's not thankful, but it's it's almost like the kind of situation where you're around with some person and they don't, they're they not really that grateful for you, but they like still kind of appreciate your help. But then once you're out of their life or something, like, or they stop hanging out with you, then you start realizing, oh, they they really helped me out a lot. Oh, I'm starting to realize that. I, start, I miss them now. But then uh, later on, uh, we'll see that we kind of see a huge difference. But another small thing I'd like to point out, because I remember we talked about this in um, She Talks Like Angel, is when Rainbow Dash is helping Rarity hold the fabrics, and she's using her wings to hold up the fabrics, kind of like what we said earlier, how it's an extra pair of, um, I'd say, extra pair of hooves, because they don't have hands. <laughs> but I also do like, too, how we see that Spike, yes, he did go through all this with Rarity, and then you see Rarity struggling, and then you can see that she's starting to get a bit jealous, like when she sees them drinking uh, milkshakes together, and then Gabby gives Spike the cherry, it's like, oh, that's sweet, I ship it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But anywho, uh, I'm going to carry on. So, taking of Heather Shai's advice, Rarity sneaks into Spike's bedroom while he's sleeping. I'm at a loss for words. I reiterate. <laughs> they need security. Yes. True. So, lady, who? Uh, I'm glad we don't have an after dark show because we could have gone all, all over. Yep. So, anyway, um, Rarity sneaks into Spike's bedroom to wake him up to tell him that, yo, Spike, let's go to the Crystal Empire, go to Crystal Caves to get some gems. 
Let's a go. Woohoo. Uh, Spike says I have plans with Gabby, but um, yeah, okay. Uh, I I could reschedule. So yay, let's go. So in a short clip, they went to the Crystal Empire and came back, and Gabby's there to pick up or to see Spike. So yay, that's awesome. So uh, Gabby says I can't wait to hear all about this, but I have to go send letters and stuff. So see you later. So the next day, Spike and Gabby are talking. Uh, they're kind of, what do we call this, it's trading stories, and they bump into Rarity. And Rarity has Power Pony tickets or con tickets, yeah, tickets for the con. And the two wanted to go. And Gabby's kind of oh no. You're going to go? Oh, never mind. Um, that, that means you have two things to tell me. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. So, anywho. On the trip back, they, they got a lot of swags. I, I think we all experienced this after a convention and whatnot. So... I'm broke. <laughs> so I have a lot of stuff in my bag. Yep. So, they, they talk about it and stuff like... Rarity's happy, Spike's happy, so um, they we, they went on their separate ways. Uh, Spike mentioning that, hey, um, who knew walking around the corn floor is tiring and whatnot. You know what? I'm just going to take the day off tomorrow. And tomorrow comes, and Rarity barges in, asking Spike if he wants to play some O&O. And Spike, being the nerd that he is, says, ooh, let's go, let's go. I I, I, I can play with you. I can teach you all the ropes of Oeno. While that's going on, Gabby comes because Spike sent her a letter telling her that I'm tired because of conventions. Uh, we I have to cancel plans. Sorry. So when she comes into the castle and discovers that he's playing Oeno with rarity, how could he? Ooh, she kind of gets angry at him and tells him to talk to the paw because he's not interested. And Spike is really sad and depressed. Oh no. And I am going to pause here because the rest of this is going to be a montage. And Silver, what do you think? You need a montage. Everybody needs a montage. But this is what I mean that it's kind it this is a part of the episode where it's hard to like rarity. Uh, bas she's she's basically manipulating Spike, you know, trying to hog all his time and basically showing the same greed that uh, made her fall to Discord back in season two. At the same time, however, I don't think she's lying about the fun she's having. I think this was the first time she ever went to a Power Pony convention, and she really enjoyed it. And she's getting to ogres and oubliettes, and funny enough, Princess Schmerity. <laughs> Not not heard since uh, uh, Dungeons and Discords. I find it funny that Spike, who basically envisioned this character to be a damsel in distress, is now giving the Squizzard fashion tips. <laughs> he ain't trying to kidnap her anymore. She'll nag him to death. Oh, no. <laughs> Take her back. Take her back. So I genuinely sense that Rarity is having fun. This is not... While maybe the motive at first was to reclaim Spike's affection, or at least his time, she is actually discovering an investment and maybe even enhancing her friendship with Spike. So the law of unintended consequences. Woo! Mm, all right, all right. And Tara, what about you? Well, pretty much like Silver said, this is the point where the, we don't, we're starting to not really like Rarity. Because, you know, she's basically guilt tripping Spike and and I wouldn't say like guilt tripping, but she basically um how do I say this? Planning stuff that he likes. Like he likes crystals, so he goes to this crystalling and stuff like that. I mean, no, it's not the crystalling. And uh he also likes power pony, so she gets that. And Basically, it's another thing too is that she plans all this last minute and tells him they don't plan ahead because Spike already made plans with Gabby and Mary's like, oh no, let's make plans with this. And Spike's like, oh, this is something I really like. And then he just has to cancel on Gabby. And then I'm pretty sure the one thing that really, that people really didn't like 
it was when Spike said, oh, I'm just going to stay home for the for the whole day t- tomorrow. And then next thing you know, Rarity comes in and it's like, hey, I came to spend time with you again. And then Gabby comes along and it's like, what? Why? And then you see poor Spike. You see his face. He's heartbroken. And then when you see Rarity completely ignore Spike and how sad he is, I think that just makes people even more mad. Oh, yeah, that is true. That is true. But anyway, I'm going to carry on. And... Technically, this isn't a montage, but I'm just going to call it a montage because the next few scenes is just uh, Rarity going to stores with Spike, like the olden days. But Spike is not feeling it. Like, Spike is really feeling down and depressed. And what you, you know one of those moments in your life where you felt like crap. So, yeah, he's having one of those. So... They return to the castle, and we can see that Spike is so sad and depressed that Twilight just has to ask, like, what is up with Spike? Why is he so sad? And Rarity just kind of blurts out, like, okay, I may have manipulated Spike to hanging out with me while ignoring Gabby. And... Twilight just says, why would you do that? And let's just say that they have a good talk about it and Rarity feels bad and wants to apologize to Gabby while bringing out another fainting chair. And now Twilight has two chairs that she needs to discard. (laughs) But not before using one. (laughs) See how it feels. I know. know. She does the pose and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is cool. That is really cool. (laughs) Uh, But anywho, Rarity goes to the post office and apologizes to Gabby and tells her what she did and whatnot. And they both kind of... Well, Rarity apologizes to the both of them and they're all good and they're buddy buddies. And Gabby and Spike are kind of cool they they patch things up and they're now hanging around and rarity's okay with it and in the last scene the epilogue the epilogue is where rarity and pinkie pie are going for some gems and rarity just explaining her feelings and thoughts to pinkie pie and before pinkie could cause trouble Spike comes to the rescue and helps Rarity with carrying the gems. So, yay, they is safe and whatnot. And I'm going to end it here. So, Silver, final thoughts. So once again, the day is safe, thanks to not trusting Pinkie Pie. (laughs) Well, basically, I enjoyed the fact that now we get to see Gabby being cross. We saw her upset with the Crusaders, but... The weird thing is that as as much as this is not fun to see her so upset, it is important. It shows that she's capable of the full emotional range. When a character is just perpetually happy, unaffected by anything, you get the sense that no, they're no longer a full character. If anything, they are lobotomized. I think it's important to see a character have a bad day or a cross moment every now and again. Looking at you, Cadence. But uh, it is fun to see Rarity's uh, apologies in effect once again. Full drama. I forget the song she played over that. Uh, over the over that. Um, gosh, it's a record player. Yep. Phonograph was it? No, is it a phonograph? I thought the phonograph was a cylindrical sound. I got no idea. I know it starts with the P. You know what? Carry on, Silva. While Tatera looks for it. <laughs> Although I also love the the homage to uh, say anything, <laughs> but she she's just but she's not saying in your eyes by Peter Gabriel. <laughs> I realized that ah a phonograph. Yes. yes, it was a phonograph. Egads. Thank you, Tatera. You're very welcome. Who would have thought that a young generation would have to teach an old man new tricks? <laughs> I'm not quite that old. But hang on. <laughs> Okay, yeah. The phonographs were apparently both discs and uh, cylinders. Mm. Curious. All right. Very curious. All in all, I just enjoy the presentation, and I enjoy the, the denouement. 
as Rarity has moved to accept this. She has learned what she needs to do rather than what she wants. She wanted attention and affection. Now she's learned to let go. And if you if you genuinely love something, even as a fr if it's the love between friends, it will come back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hi, Spike. You're welcome back. <laughs> See, that's, that's what happened in the end of the show. There we go. Anywho, Tara, what about you? I really enjoyed this episode. Like, like I said, there was that one part where I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't like Rarity. I was one of them. And but in the end, though, it is a good lesson. It's like, you know, it you can let go of someone you used to hang out with all the time, but you, can, you don't have to completely let go of them. You could still spend time with them. Just don't do it last minute. Plan ahead of time. So that way, you know, no drama happens and you don't want to go through all that drama because it's silly and it's ridiculous. But yeah, and I know that the I know Safi would make a joke about this, but that one scene where Gabby says, you apologize a lot. This is where Safi would come and go, hey, she's talking about you, Torterra, because you're Canadian. <laughs> No comment. But I said a boot. Oh, because apparently Canadians apologize a lot. <laughs> apparently, that's what I've been told. Yes, uh, I'm right now. I'm thinking of Jim Carrey in the second uh, Anchorman movie. Oh yeah, I remember that one. That one was good. Anyway, I've I've derailed you. Sorry. See, I can apologize too. <laughs> See, there you go. But yeah, all I could say is I really enjoyed the episode and I love the performance, especially from Tabitha, where especially when she comes to apologizing. That was hilarious. Uh, the apologizing part from uh, Tabitha uh, Rarity is just awesome. But anywho, and as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I like the return of Gabby. I like the whole scenario for this one. And uh, the, the way that Rarity kind of buys Spike's affection is, hmm, let's just say that this is a lesson that people should take to heart, that buying someone's affection is not good. But the end there, yeah, let's just say that it's all good, it's all good. I, I like the faces, I like the episode, I, I don't know, I am a lot for words because you guys already took them. Aha, we've taken your words. Oh no. They're not our words, and the word is the bird. Oh no. Ah, the bird, bird, bird. A bird is the word. I said the bird, bird, bird. The bird oh, is the no. Word. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, once again, it is time to test ourselves. To see our self-restraint. To see if we are master over our own speech patterns. Can we get through the next episode without saying my little witch academia? I'm sure we can. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, yes, next week we are going to do a Patreon request, My Little Witch, so that would be awesome. Ah, he did it! <laughs> See? <laughs> I planted the seed and it sprouted rather quickly. Yeah, but did I did it on purpose or was it a slip up? Yes. <laughs> so anywho, yes, this next week will be that. So anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Dindia Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Or they can find me many, many, many places. You can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. A quick search should I should pop up. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for After the Factor Silver Quill and I shall appear. On Kofi, I... And Patreon, you just look for Silver Quill and you'll see my work. And I'd appreciate any support. And you can find me on Wednesdays on Equestria Daily, posting either comic reviews or editorials. And with the news of Transformers and My Little Pony doing a crossover, you can bet I'll have some uh, prime material to talk about in the near future. <laughs> you said prime. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torchero1324, or they could just do a simple Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page, where your support is very necessary, not forcefully, but, you know, you could spread the news if you want, or you could donate a tiny $1. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. Go do so. Anyway, also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on BelieveAlive.com. Links will be in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. 
with every support you get a weekly access to preview and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me and one of the few things that uh, I've been uploading on the Patreon is the review discussion in raw so if we slip up mess up or somebody says a naughty word you'll get to listen to it unedited and unfiltered yay much fun right Oh, you mean curse words like like? That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, silver. Like those words. <laughs> wow, silver. <laughs> what? You didn't think I could curse? That's not a word. <laughs> oh my god! The, the features are gonna have a good time with that one. <laughs> yeah, so so is Sweetie Bot. Oh, in this week's episode, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For the YouTube. Oh, people are gonna. People are going to be so speechy and be like, oh, Silver said a bad word. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm not going to say anything. The, the Patreon commenters would say something. <laughs> so anyway, uh, wait, what's... Oh, no. Sorry? I, instead, instead, I'll say the, the ultimate curse word, merchandising. Oh, oh the horror. Retcon. Oh, the horror. Oh, my God. Hold your tongue, young man. Oh, boys. But anyway, talking about thank yous, I like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Tristan, and also myself. Like, thank you so much. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And I am Torterra. And we will guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the yes Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, next week is going to be all about potential and destiny. Wow. Has, that's different from My Little Pony How? No, next week will be uh, My Little Rich. Ah, you did it again. Okay. <laughs>